Hello, my name is Mark Sacalarius. I apologize if my voice is a little hoarse. I'm currently battling a cold. Um, I live in Japan. I am currently employed as an assistant professor at a science university in Chiba. I'm also a doctoral student in the dissertation phase of an ED program at Northeastern University in Boston. Today I'm going to talk about teacher perceived obstacles in implementing English as a medium of instruction programs, referred to as EMI from here on, in Japanese universities. Essentially, I gave 20 teachers a Likert style questionnaire asking them to what extent they agreed or disagreed with several statements regarding cultural and linguistic differences between the East and the West and how these pertain to teaching and learning styles. I would like to share some of my findings with you today. So first, you might be wondering to yourself, what is EMI? Uh, the director and founder of Oxford EMI Training, Julie Dearden, uh, pictured to the right, describes the concept as academic subjects taught in English in a country where English is not the main language. Currently, international students at the university I'm employed are expected to somehow learn Japanese to the point of college-level proficiency. I have talked with students who have told me that they spend 5 to 10 hours a week studying Japanese, and they pay for it out of their own pockets. This is a big disadvantage for English-speaking international students. They have to spend time and money learning a very difficult language. Learning a language like Japanese in an accelerated manner is very stressful and puts these students at a disadvantage compared to domestic students. So what's the problem, right? International students are struggling to learn Japanese. It's expensive and they're having difficulty keeping up in classes taught in Japanese. So why don't universities just offer English courses? Problem solved, right? Well, in addition to the results of my questionnaire, I want to go over a few issues in the literature. This is by no means an exhaustive coverage of the literature, but I want to give just a brief overview. So first, there appears to be a lack of skilled teachers in Japan to carry out EMI courses, especially among domestic teachers. Tsuneyoshi, 2005, tells us that Japanese teachers teaching in their second or third language of English are required to spend four to five times more effort to prepare their classes. Additionally, teachers in a Bradford 2013 study expressed a concern that their classes in English were dry and lacked humorous anecdotes or cultural references. Despite their extra efforts and struggles, these teachers, according to Bradford 2013, are not compensated for their additional prep time. Another issue may be a resistance on the part of universities to being Englishified or westernized. I was struck by one participant's comment in a Brown 2014 study. When asked why EMI was not being implemented in the university, they said, quote, I think people would be upset if they thought this university was turning into a foreign university. In fact, it has been my personal experience that some universities in Japan pride themselves on having the proper Japanese spirit regarding education. Finally, there is some confusion regarding the meaning of EMI. EMI involves the teaching of course content, such as mathematics, in English. So not teaching English, but teaching in English. Ali 2013 tells us that some teachers are confused as to whether they should just start teaching in English or instead teach grammar and vocabulary. Although, as Aizawa and McKinley 2020 tell us, 
The Japanese Ministry of Education and UNESCO both state clearly that EMI does not involve the teaching of English. Even still, Galloway et al. 2017 indicate that nearly half of Japanese students taking EMI courses are doing so for the purpose of improving their English language skills. This suggests a disconnect between the purpose of EMI and the reason why students are taking these courses. Next, I would like to talk about some of the responses to my questionnaire distributed to 20 teachers, 13 international teachers, and seven domestic or Japanese teachers. For the sake of brevity, I will talk about questions that received strong agreement or strong disagreement. Essentially, mean scores of near or under one suggesting strong disagreement, or near or over four, suggesting strong agreement. I use the mean score to show consensus among teachers, at least in their perceptions about certain phenomena. Here, you can see question 11 that reads, the style of teaching in Japan is different from the West. The mean score, 4.25, suggested consensus or strong agreement that this phenomena exists. This is perhaps more interesting when considering the next question on the following slide. So as the previous slide suggests, there may be a difference in classroom styles between the East and the West. This is particularly interesting when considering how subjects responded to question 13, which asked, when giving an opinion, domestic students, uh, Japanese students in this case, seldom disagree with the teachers or peers. This might be one of the ways classrooms are different between the East and the West. There was a stronger agreement to this statement among international teachers with a mean score of 4.15, but Japanese teachers somewhat agreed in general with a mean score of 3.33. Indeed, Bradford 2013 advances an idea that Japanese students are typically expected to be passive learners who do not question their teachers or peers. Tsuneyoshi 2005 and Bradford 2013 tell us that critical thinking and discussions are an essential part of English classes. This difficulty in disagreeing with teachers and peers may impede on discussion-based class styles. Passive learning may be incongruent with discussion-oriented English classrooms. So regarding the necessity for EMI classes, uh, teachers agreed with the statement, some international students struggle trying to take classes in Japanese. Um, this is very concerning considering the effort and money being used by, in the form of government initiatives to attract international students. One notable initiative uh, is the Global 30 program that sought to attract 100,000 international students by 2020. This number was reached in 2003, so the number was reset to 300,000 uh, students. I say that agreement to this statement is concerning because the students who ultimately are attracted by government initiatives and Japanese university promotions and programs, the students who ultimately come to Japan to study may be struggling as they are not culturally and linguistically accommodated. So I think it's important to emphasize during this presentation that EMI would truly be a win-win for all stakeholders in a Japanese university. There may be a tendency to think EMI is mostly beneficial for international students, but as you can see from the responses to questions 14 and 15, teachers recognize that EMI would benefit domestic students even more than their international counterparts. You can see here that while there was a strong agreement that mixed EMI classes involving international and domestic students 
would benefit international students, mean score of 4.4, there was a unanimous agreement that these classes would benefit domestic or Japanese students. You can see that on the figure to the right that not even one teacher questioned that. The benefit is presumably through increased multicultural and multilingual interaction. This is a strong point when selling EMI programs in meetings with teachers and administrators uh, to create buy-in. The idea that EMI is truly a win-win for all stakeholders. So how do we move forward? Well, I don't claim to have all the answers, but I think these might be some good starting points to consider based on the emerging data. First, increasing FD training for EMI teachers. In the literature, there was a sense that uh, teachers felt as long as they could speak English or they had some English proficiency, that FD training was not necessary. But this is not the case. There is a lot of research indicating that increasing student interaction time is very effective in EMI classes. So that would be one thing to consider. I, I will refer you to Ismailov 2022 and Mackey 2013 for more information about that. Second, clearer definitions of EMI being used by universities and government officials is essential. The term is being applied loosely without much clarification regarding what EMI is and perhaps more importantly, what it is not in conjunction with increased student interaction time. Teaching critical thinking skills may be important for prepping students for discussion-based English classes where they are expected to give their opinions and agree or disagree with their peers and teachers. Thank you for listening to my presentation. During my presentation, I mentioned a lot of research and researchers so please take a moment to look over these references.